Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is OnlyFans? Other questions here would include, what are the personality profiles of OnlyFans creators and members? Is being on OnlyFans a good idea? And are there mental health consequences to being a creator on OnlyFans? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. OnlyFans is a social media platform based in Britain that was established in 2016. At the time of making this video, it has 450,000 content creators and over 30 million registered users. It allows the creators, who can be influencers or really anyone over 18, to charge customers for content. OnlyFans keeps 20% of the revenue, and they pay 80% to the creator. Much of the content that is sold is in the form of videos and images. Most creators on OnlyFans offer explicit content, otherwise known as not safe for work. The vast majority of the creators are female, and the vast majority of the customers are male. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the pronouns consistent with that typical arrangement. Of course, there can be exceptions to that. The creators make money in a variety of ways. There's a monthly subscription just to get access to the creator's page. This is usually between $5 and $50. $20 seems to be a popular figure. Some creators don't charge at all for the basic access to the page. The creator can sell her content pay-per-view, and this appears to be a major way to make money on the site. This could include images, videos, or live streams. For example, she might take a picture of herself wearing lingerie and charge $10 just for that image. The pay-per-view is capped at $50 per item, so that's the maximum that a creator could charge for that. The creator can also work out deals with individual members, like direct messages. For instance, a particular member could be interested in a specific demonstration, let's say, and he could make a deal with the creator so that she does that in a private video for him. The limit for a private message is $100. Members can also give tips. The tips are capped at $100, going up to $200 after four months. So who is on OnlyFans? As I mentioned, anyone over 18 can join as a creator or a member. Some of the creators are influencers. They try to convince their social media followers to join them on OnlyFans. So they start off with an advantage. They can usually make much more money than somebody who does not have the followers. Others are not influencers. They get on there and try to do the best they can to build their business. The New York Times has published a few articles about OnlyFans. The references to those articles will be in the description for this video. They talked about a few different people on OnlyFans. Here's a summary of those contacts. They interviewed a 23-year-old who made $64,000 in about six months. She had worked as a medical biller prior to becoming a creator. There was a 22-year-old from Montana who made $500 in two months, a 36-year-old who earned $250 in about two months working full-time. She didn't seem too happy with the amount of money she was getting for that effort. They spoke to a 27-year-old mother of three in Ohio who made about $700 a month, she said that she never thought anyone would pay to see her naked, and it's been a confidence boost. There was also a former model they spoke with who made $165,000 in four months. In the summer of 2020, there was a controversial creator named Bella Thorne that came onto the site and caused a bit of a stir. She earned a million dollars in a day on OnlyFans and $2 million within a week. Apparently, many members were upset because they were expecting Belle Thorne to release explicit content. Instead, it was more like PG-13. For example, she had a pay-per-view video for $200 that people thought would contain nudity, but allegedly it did not. I mentioned before the various dollar limits for certain items. There are rumors that some of those limits were lowered to the levels I indicated because of Belle Thorne. But OnlyFans said the transaction limits were not based on any one user. OnlyFans is an interesting platform. Like many social media platforms, there are megastars who make a lot of money, and then there are people who struggle to earn anything. One of the challenges we see here with the Bella Thorne incident 
is that a number of the sex workers who were on OnlyFans as creators were upset because Thorne wandered onto the platform and was disruptive. They accused her of not respecting the fact that this was their work environment, and they are angry with her for not pushing for the decriminalization of sex work. So what motivates people to pay money to creators on OnlyFans? I think that if one takes a quick look at the platform, they might be left with the impression that the platform monetizes this question. How much would somebody pay to see a particular person naked? I think this is definitely part of it. People are curious. They see a person on OnlyFans and they get excited to see them without clothes. But if that were the only motivator, why would somebody continue to pay for the same thing? Once they've seen what they wanted to see, what would be the point of additional videos or images? In looking at a few videos where creators describe their experience on OnlyFans and from what we know about webcam models and other related professions, I believe this industry is partially based on the communication about sex and relationships. The creators talk about how they spend the majority of their time chatting with the customers, not producing content. So they're answering questions, having a dialogue, they're getting descriptions of certain services that the members want them to perform. Without that component, the members probably would not stay around too long. The emphasis for smaller creators, not so much for the influencers, seems to be trying to make the customer feel special. They want the members to feel like the creator is their online girlfriend. The creators make the argument that they're providing a personalized service. That's why what they offer on OnlyFans is better than other sources of that type of information. This reminds me of a case that occurred in Florida in early 2019. This case did not involve OnlyFans, but it did involve a webcam model who provided the same services and built a relationship with a customer. The customer was named Grant Amato. He stole $200,000 from his parents and his brother in order to communicate with the webcam model. The family members believed he was addicted and they tried to cut him off. Amato killed them. Now, this is an extreme case, but it does highlight some of the dangers of this type of service. So what personality profiles do we see with OnlyFans creators and members. I'll start with the members. The members tend to be loners, socially awkward. They have a history of being rejected by women, an interest in unusual sexual activity, a lack of insight, and a tendency to become obsessed. If they believe that the OnlyFans creator is really their online girlfriend, like if they believe that's a true romantic relationship, there may be some reality testing issues as well, like some delusional thoughts. With that in mind, we see high openness to experience. They invest in fantasy, low conscientiousness. They're not cautious, maybe extroverted or introverted. We don't see a specific relationship there. We see high agreeableness to the point of being gullible and high neuroticism. As far as the personality profiles of the creators, here we see more variants. In general, I would expect to see high openness, no specific level of conscientiousness, although lower levels would probably be somewhat overrepresented. High extroversion, these individuals are assertive. They try to appear friendly and outgoing. We see no specific level of agreeableness and low neuroticism. What are the risks associated with this type of work? Well, there certainly seems to be more risk to the creators than to members. So I'll focus on the creator experience. Here, a few risks come to mind. First one, some of the services offered by the creators expose them to different types of dangers. For example, some of the OnlyFans creators, for a price, will rate the quality of a member's genitals. So the member will transmit an image of his member to the creator, and she will evaluate it on a scale of something like 1 to 10. The creator is being exposed to potentially distressing images, and I think under pressure to give out inflated ratings. That is to say that the object they're rating is better than it really is, which isn't dangerous in itself, but it is anti-science. Another example is the creators will often sell their undergarments to the members. The primary risk here would be prosecution. There are federal obscenity laws that some would consider obscure, but people have been arrested for that activity. 
Not many compared to how often it happens, but there is still a risk. What I find funny about this is that there is a three-pronged test to determine whether the activity is illegal or not under those laws. The third part says whether a reasonable person finds the matter lacks serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. So we see this argument that this is a political activity. I guess I forgot about the long-standing struggle between the Republican, Democrat, and underwear parties. Moving on to the second item of risk, this one is fairly straightforward. A member could try to find a creator and attack them, like a stalker. Online sex work is less risky than in-person sex work, but there's still some danger. The third risk would be related to the creator's future career endeavors. We have seen stories of online sex workers who have difficulty finding jobs in traditional employment areas, although I'm not aware of any specific problems related to former OnlyFans creators. There's a debate regarding the morality of what these creators do, a moral argument. Many people believe that these sex workers should be left alone, live and let live. If they want to make their money, then that's their business. That's fine. The difficulty is that employers don't want to get involved. They often worry about their image. They worry about how that's going to reflect on their morality. Even though they often recognize that the work of an OnlyFans creator doesn't constitute criminal activity, the employer would still worry that society views it as immoral. The so-called morality police, the cancel culture, attempts to shame people who engage in certain activities, including sex work. If a creator on OnlyFans wants to leave the platform and find traditional employment, the fact that all those images and videos were distributed may come back to haunt them. We see this risk on many social media platforms, but it's clearly amplified on something like OnlyFans, where, again, explicit images make up the vast majority of the content. It is really the expectation. The fourth risk is related to mental health. Research has repeatedly demonstrated that sex work can lead to a number of mental health symptoms, including those associated with substance use, depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Some people look at something like OnlyFans and they say, well, this is safe, there's no physical contact, this only has visual and communication components, so it's all good. The risk does seem to be lower if restricted to online environments, but I would be very surprised if it's completely free of any mental health consequences. It is still technically sex work. Looking at the last question, is this a good idea? The debate over sex work, and specifically the type we see on OnlyFans, is interesting inasmuch as the variety of opinions it elicits. On one side, you have people say that this exploits women, it harms them. It's another example of men trying to buy and sell women, to control women. On the other side, you have people saying, stop the stigma. This is empowering to women. It offers financial freedom, a flexible work environment. I'm not going to get into the morality issue because I don't know the answer to those questions. I imagine that someday sex work will be decriminalized in more areas. It is illegal in, of course, most areas at this time. But just because something is not criminal doesn't make it a good idea. Strictly speaking about items like development through the lifespan, life satisfaction, quality of life, and mental health, I would say that the risks of online sex work outweigh the benefits not just at an individual level, but at a societal level as well. I think it does exploit women, and it encourages unhelpful relationship patterns in men. So those are my thoughts on the OnlyFans website. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.